What's up guys, welcome to the Stats Free Sports channel. Here today to bring you a video giving you five names on my personal 2023 NFL roster bubble watch list. Now let's get into it. So this is not quite a prediction video. You know, I do feel strongly on all these five players. But, you know, I guess it can be a prediction video if you want it to be as well. But, uh, but also... You know, just these guys I feel strong about. You know, their their career right now, not career, but their standing with their current team right now is kind of shaky. And uh, these five guys, I say at least, if you want to do, do prediction, I'll say at least three of them will be cut from these five. I feel pretty confident in. But uh, let's get into it, guys. Um, you know, and first before we start, I hope all these guys keep their job, or if they do get cut, move on to something better and more money. But, you know... Um, I'm not one of them nasty guys who, oh, I hope they get cut and never come back and they're trash. No, but, you know, I do see them kind of outstand their welcome with their current team. So let's get into it, guys. First, first on this list is Leo Collins, uh, guard slash tackle from the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, in the, first off, the list is in no particular order, so, you know, but there's no real ranking to it. Just number one, though, my name is Leo Collins. Uh, formerly of the Dallas Cowboys, currently with the Cincinnati Bengals, came in last year, kind of hyped up, you know, um, came in last year, and this is a quote, saying, your new bodyguard is in town, referring to the Bengals, the Bengals fans, and also Joe, Joe Burrow, and last year, he had a sorry season, <laughs> you know, he played a sorry season last year, wasn't quite, you know, up, up to par, up to standards, and then at the end of the season last year, he uh, tore multiple ligaments, you know, in his left knee. Last December. So, he missed the playoff run last year. Uh, and, the, and the real question is, you know, I know the Bengals need O-line depth. And most teams, all teams do need some good O-line depth bad. But they need you to be healthy, too. You know, so the thing is, for me and Leo Collins, and his future, uh, future with, with the Bengals is, will he be healthy enough to really participate well this season? Last year, he came in healthy and didn't do well either. So, if you come in a little banged up and not quite, or well, not that close to 100%, Will they keep him around? That, that's a big question that I have for Bengals and Bengals fans on Liel Collins. And also, if they cut him, they'll save about $7.7 million. That's a nice amount of money to really save for a guy who's not going to be playing well anyway. So uh, I think Liel Collins should definitely be on most people's watch list uh, for the bubble roster spot going into uh, the last couple weeks of NFL preseason. Next up, number two. This name has, I've been saying for months now since uh, since they got a couple receivers this offseason, and that is Corey Davis of the New York Jets. Uh, I've been saying this for a while. Since they brought in Alan Lazard, since they brought in Kyle and all those guys and Aaron Rodgers, I think that – and McCole Hartman, that room is a little too deep, you know, and um, he's a good player still. Had a little injury – uh, injury bug season last year, but I think he will be a good catch on to a team like my Falcons if he is cut or, or traded. Something I've been saying for a while, as I said earlier. So uh, I've, I've been pretty steadfast on Corey Davis being moved some way, somehow, trade or being cut. And I think prior to the season actually starting, I think he will be uh, cut by the New York Jets. It's just a matter of time for me personally. And if he is freed up, I mean, if he is cut, excuse me, he will free up $10.5 million in cap space for the Jets. You can't beat that for a guy who might be your fourth, fifth string wide receiver right now behind Hardman, behind Lazar, behind Garrett Wilson. And though Cobb, he's not, he's better than Cobb, Corey Davis is, but, you know, Aaron Rodgers has more comfortability with Cobb, obviously. So he could be behind Cobb on the depth chart also. So for me, you know, your fourth or fifth string wide receiver costing you ten and a half million, you got to cut him. You know, if you do cut him, come on over to the Falcons. We can definitely use you. You know, Arthur Smith loves his former Tennessee Titans players. Now, next up, number three, I'm gonna go with Clyde Edwards. Uh, uh, excuse me, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, um, running back for the Kansas City Chiefs. Played great his first year and kind of been on the downturn ever since. Um, the downside of moving him or releasing him would really be just you're saving no money. You know, you're saving less than a thousand, less than a million dollars. So moving on from him, I mean, it's, it's doable, it's possible. Some I've been saying for a while too. Um, I had his name being 
entrenched in in the trade market heavily during during the NFL draft a couple months back. But obviously that uh, he wasn't moved. It didn't happen. He's still with the Chiefs as of right now. But you know they might as well hold on to him. I guess. But I could definitely see a situation where they they they, they uh, don't. But like I say, it only costs you less than a million dollars if you do cut him. And, you know, let's say someone does go down in their backfield, you still have someone who's proven, someone who's done it on a big stage before and not new to it. So I can get it both ways. I can see it. I can see Chief saying, no, it'd be dumb. Just keep them just for insurance. I can also see it as, hey, what's the point? You know, you have your two main guys there. And we've seen in the past also any running back that worth their salt can definitely come to the Chiefs and make some and make some noise, especially now with the running back market that that the way it is, so many big names left in free agency. You know, if someone does go down during the season, you can bring someone in that's pretty solid. You know, so I can see it both ways, kind of tough, but I can definitely get with people saying hold on to them. So I'm not opposed to that either. Uh, number four, a guy like a lot out of uh, college a couple years ago, Anthony Swartz, speedster out of Cleveland. Um, he hasn't panned out. Simple as that. And most and most speedsters don't. You know, guys like uh, what was it uh, JJ Nelson and the other speedster Brown a couple years ago. You know, these speedsters who have amazing speed don't quite mostly make it to be able to be a, a real starter in today's NFL. And looking at Anthony Schwartz numbers played in 25. All right, guys, number five and last but not least on this list, one of my favorite tight ends coming out of the draft. I think he came out 2019, 2020 without without looking it up. Uh, I was a big fan of him coming out of Missouri, and that's Albert O, uh, tight end from the Denver Broncos. So I had him due for a breakout year last year, you know, with a new coaching staff with Russell Wilson. I thought he had a great season. Turns out, Greg Dolchers beat him out, and they barely even used him last season. Now, coming to this season, another new regime, and also you still have Greg Dolchers, who played well last year, and I like a lot. But Sean Payton traded for former Saints tight end Adam Troutman, who he's familiar with too, so he's probably in that backup role. So if no injury happens you know, before the, the preseason ends, I do expect Albert O to finally be let go by the Broncos and move on somewhere else. Someone, and for me personally, I had him being a stud. <laughs> I was so high on him coming out of the draft a couple of years ago, and you know it didn't pan out at all with the Denver Broncos when they traded uh, Noah Fant for the, for, uh, for Russell. I just knew it. I was like, oh yeah, Albert O gonna be nice. He's gonna be you know. If not, if not a Pro Bowl, at least having Pro Bowl style numbers. I thought him and Russ would have been that good together, but turns out he was barely even used. So, yeah, um, if not traded, which probably won't happen now, Alberto probably should be moved on from um, what team. I have no clue what team would pick him up, but I think he's still talented. You know, um, I think he still has some left in the tank. Like I say, he barely even been he barely even got any playing time. <laughs> you know, so I think definitely he's be ready to. Find some burn, get some burn. I, mean, I know the Texans need tight ends badly, so he can come on in there. The Raiders, you know, so one of those two teams maybe we'll uh, see. But I think he's a stud in the waiting, just waiting the wings for a good opportunity, for a, a good scheme, and a coach to believe in. Him, you know, so but that's it for video, guys. Those are my five players who should be on the watch list for the NFL roster bubble spots this season. So. That's it for the video. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. All right, guys. Number five and last but not least on this list, one of my favorite tight ends coming out of the draft. I think he came out 2019, 2020 without, without looking it up. Uh, I was a big fan of him coming out of Missouri, and that's Albert O, uh, tight end from the Denver Broncos. So I had him due for a breakout year last year, you know, with a new coaching staff with Russell Wilson. I thought he had a great season. Turns out, Greg Dolchers beat him out, and they barely even used him last season. Now, coming to this season, another new regime, and also you still have Greg Dolchers, who played well last year, and I like a lot. But Sean Payton traded for former Saints tight end Adam Troutman, who he's familiar with too, so he's probably in that backup role. So if no injury happens you know, before the, the preseason ends, I do expect Albert O to finally be let go by the Broncos and move on somewhere else. Someone, and for me personally, I had him being a stud. <laughs> I was so high on him.
coming out of the draft a couple years ago, and you know it didn't pan out at all with the Denver Broncos when they traded uh, Noah Fant for the, for uh, for Russell. I just knew it. I was like, oh yeah, Albert O gonna be nice. He's gonna be you know, if not if not a Pro Bowl, at least having Pro Bowl style numbers. I thought him and Russell would have been that good together, but turns out he was barely even used. So yeah, um, if not traded, which probably won't happen now, Albert O probably should be moved on from. Um, what team, I have no clue what team would pick him up, but I think he's still talented. You know, um, I think he still has some left in the tank. Like I say, he barely even been, he barely even got any plans on, <laughs> you know, so I think definitely he's ready to find some burn, get some burn. I, mean, I know the Texans need tight ends badly, so he can come on in there, the Raiders, you know, so one of those two teams maybe we'll uh, see, but I think he's a stud in the waiting, just Waiting the wings for a good opportunity, for a, a good scheme, and a coach to believe in them, you know. So, but that's it for the video, guys. Those are my five players who should be on the watch list for the NFL roster bubble spots this season. So, that's it for the video. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.